Hey guys, in absence of regular lecture, I'm going to try to give you some of the notes that I would have given you otherwise. Um, honestly, this material comes great from Ed Puzzles and other sources too, but I know a lot of people like the regular notes format. So here we go. So magnets, a uh, couple things about magnets. We have uh, repulsion and attraction, and it's the same electric, same as your electrostatic rules, like, pel like poles repel, unlike poles attract. Um, we've got magnetic poles as we do uh, with electric charges. Uh, you can actually magnetize or demagnetize um, a magnet. A magnetization would be if you put a magnet in a strong magnet, a piece of metal in a strong magnetic field, um, and then like bang it, the domains kind of align. Um, let me just give you the, so basically when you have um, randomly aligned domains, these little arrows represent, represent domains, um, you have um, unmagnetized material. You start to get these domains all in the same orientation, then you start to get um, magnetism. Then if you break the magnet, of course, you get uh, north and south on either end. The domains can remain consistent. So magnetic fields, um, are going to be uh, B is your uh, going to be the the symbol for magnetic field, and it's measured in Tesla. And then we have we're going to have field lines a lot like we did for electrostatic. So moving forward, those so the the biggest thing to remember here is that the lines go from north to south, just like they went from positive to negative. So you know here I go from north to south here. Um, the line density, just like with electrostatics. Uh, represents where the field is strongest. So it's strongest here around the poles or here around the poles or here around the poles. And those, it's pretty consistent here between these two poles. Um, and then it flares out at the end. So again, hopefully that, that helps you materialize that. Ferrofluid is a cool magnetic um, material. It's a fluid with pieces of iron in it. Um, there's a lot in magnetic fields. So from here on out, you really don't need to know this stuff. So, um, couple things you'll learn if you go on to AP, you get a force that experiences, if you have a, a charge going through a field, a magnetic field, it experiences a force and thus deflection. So, you know, that follows right-hand rule. So basically the right-hand rule says the, the force, the field, and the motion are all perpendicular to each other. Again, not that critical. Um, so as the charge starts to move through the field, it will be deflected and uh, travel in a circular pattern. Um, you know, there's great applications for this. So if you run electricity through here and there's a magnet in here and a speaker, the speaker vibrates back and forth, um, thus producing the sound. Um, the other thing that we can do this for is a motor. When you run electricity through here, it starts to spin the shaft and, you know, spins the motor that it's attached to. And that could be your fan or your blender or your turntable and your microwave um, or an electric car for that matter. So um, furthermore, um, we have when we have current moving we also get a magnetic field um and that so basically when i have a wire here a magnetic field circles the wire and again this is a second right hand rule and it shows you the direction of this not that important the whole scheme of things for regions physics um but i just want to bring this into your attention so you know if you start to coil the wire you strengthen that field and ultimately that can be done to produce an electromagnet so when you coil the wires again the moving electricity creates a magnetic field and if you have a, uh, a metal core in there, that core becomes magnetized, you get an electric magnet, electromagnet. Um, here's a big piece of this. So, you know, the applications of this are when you have an electric motor, you spend, you send electricity through the wires, and then there's a force on the wire that makes it spin. So you're turning, basically turning electricity into motion or mechanical energy. The opposite of that is a generator. When you get something to spin the wire, um, and that could be a windmill or a water falling or a, a generator, uh, you know, coal creating steam to, to power a generator. And when you have that electric, I'm sorry, when you have that motion in the magnetic field, you produce current. So those are kind of important, um, not for your unit, but for your life, um, not for regions physics, but your life. Um, last one I've talked about is, you know, that that idea of um, electromagnetic induction. If you start to coil wires, you get you strengthen the field. So if there's a differential between this coil and this coil, we can actually change the voltage. So um, what, what a transformer does is it takes um, high voltage and then uh, turns it up to low or turns it down to low voltage or vice versa. Um, you know, so if you're using an electronic device, often you have a, a transformer that changes the voltage from what the input is to what the output is. Um, also, you can do that at power plant. You create low voltage here. Your transformer steps it up. And then it's easy to, to